So on this one here, you're asked to find the altitude of a rocket. You're given time and you're given velocity. If you plot those points, we end up getting a velocity versus time graph, as you see here. Now, how do we find altitude? Well, altitude is just how far up you are in the air, then, the distance you're above the ground. Once again, distance on a velocity time graph is the area underneath your curve. So you're asked to figure out the area underneath the curve, because you're, which is our distance, which is our altitude. There's a couple of ways you could do that. You could say, well, I got to look at my area underneath my curve all the way over to 20.3. Or I mean, not 20.3, 40.3. So it goes from there all the way over to here, and it goes up. If you wanted, you could say, well, that's almost a triangle. You could just do the area of a triangle. Or if you wanted, you could do lots of trapezoids. So you could say, well, I'll start here, I'll go to here, and I'll come down and then I'll go over here. And that's a triangle. Then you could go from here up to say here, down to here, over to here. And by the way, that's supposed to be straight down all the way. And then same idea here. So you'd have a bigger trapezoid, a medium-sized trapezoid, and a triangle. But whether you do one big triangle or a couple trapezoids in a triangle, you're going to get something very similar for your area. Now, it's asking you to find an equation. Now, if you've had statistics, you could enter your data into list 1 and list 2 and do your least squares regression line or your linear regression. So after you entered your data, you would hit stat, arrow over to the right to calc, and then select number 8, which is your linreg. And that would tell you the equation of your line. If you remember how to do that, great. If not, it's going to be very similar to what we have right here. When we graph the equation of this line, it looks like it's a pretty good fit. So if you've had statistics and you do your line reg, you would get something similar to this. If you've not had statistics, just take this equation of the line for what it is. For the most part, we're just trying to find our slope going from here up to here and with a y-intercept of 0. So our velocity then is really our slope of 23.5 times our time. That would be the equation for our velocity. Then it says from your equation, find your altitude after 40.32 seconds. So we know our altitude, which is distance, is area underneath of our curve. And once again, the area underneath of our curve is, for the most part, a triangle. So that's why we're doing one-half base times height. And the area underneath that curve is not going to be the area of a triangle. It's going to be our distance, because it's an area underneath the velocity time graph, equals our 1 half times our time times our height, which is our velocity. That's how far we're going up and down. Now, our time, we don't know it's t. Our velocity is what we figured it out, 23.5 times your time. 
That does go ahead and simplify down. Half of your 23 and a half is your 11.75. Your t times t is your t squared. Now for part c, we know our time is our 40.32. So we can take our 40.32 and plug it in here. working that out and we would get our distance with our appropriate units of feet because we're dealing with feet per second up here and feet per second times our seconds here when we're looking at area leaves us only with feet. Well that's for part C. Well part D here we need to go ahead and look at what is the velocity at 10 kilometers, and what is the velocity at 50 kilometers? Now, the easiest way to be able to convert your units of 10 kilometers into feet is to go to Google, type in convert 10 kilometers to feet, and it gives it to you. That's what I did to do this. Now, if you wanted, you could take your 10 divided by your 1.61, and that would get it into miles, and then multiply it by 5,280 for how many feet are in a mile, but it's easier just to go to Google. Now, with that in mind, we know that our distance, our distance equation right here, is this. We know our distance right here in feet, so I'm going to plug that in. With that in mind, it's not going to tell me my velocity, but it's going to tell me my time. So if I solve this for time, so I could divide by my 11.75 and then take my square root, I would get my time. So I know how long it takes me to get up to my 10 kilometers, but I'm looking for my velocity. Well, here's my velocity equation right here at the top. V equals 23 and a half times my time. So all I have to do is take my time and plug it in here, multiply it out, and I get my velocity in feet per second. Basically, all I have to do now is go ahead and repeat that process for my 50 kilometers, because I know my distance is this here. My distance for 50 kilometers when I convert it to feet is right here. So I'll take that number and plug it in. Then I got to solve it for my time. So I got to divide by the 11.75. 11 then I got to go ahead and take my square root and I get my time. Once again, to be able to find my velocity, I can use my velocity equation. Take my time, plug it in right here, multiply it out, and I get my velocity.